Good morning, all. I'm so excited to speak to you about a topic that almost touches everyone in this room, right? Everyone is a consumer in some form or the other, apart from being a technologist in their uh, uh, professional life, right? So, in next 30 minutes, I'm going to speak to you about the consumer journey and how the technology and data is enabling the organizations by seeing the nuanced behaviors of this customer journey and how the data is enabling the technology to make it future-proof, the organization future-proof, right? So, uh, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Helen Mishra, Senior Manager at Read & Studio. Primarily, my whole um, experience so far has been focused on uh, uh, data engineering, application engineering, especially in the cloud uh, cloud uh, side of uh, development as a SaaS product. I have uh, also expertise on the product management side of things and currently working specifically in the retail domain as a marketing technology solution development lead, right? So. All right. So everybody knows about this brand, right? So I'm sure most of you, of you in this room must be having this app and would have used this in last, at least in two months, once in two months, right? Lovely. So do we know some story behind this? Anybody? How this Mintra has evolved from 2016 till 2023? Any hands? Okay, all right, that means, Everybody wants to hear about the story. Okay, so it was the year of 2016 when a, a group of uh, engineers sat together and uh, thought that um, this retail industry is is moving quite fast, right? Uh, this fast uh, fast fashion is picking up so so rapidly that these uh, uh, retail uh, apps they want to keep up with that pace and they want to really churn out quickly the, the, new, the new fashions, new products every 30 days, right? That was the demand from the consumers, right? To, to overcome this challenge and to, you know, really go ahead in the curve, what, do, what did they do? So they sat together and they uh, created a team called Rapid Technology Development Project, right? So there, they came up with an idea that, okay, the fa uh, we are now currently dependent on the fashion designers to to make a design, that design goes through uh, the, the whole quality improvement process and everything, and then it finally goes to the market. What they did is that they did some analysis of the previous history of the, of the consumer behavior and the, the sales pattern of the organization, and they, they thought that how about we utilize the technology to find those preferences of the consumer those color preferences of the consumer, those purchase behaviors of the consumer, and how do we generate something that enables this, this fashion designers in a more assistive way. So that's how, if you know one of the brands of Mintra, Moda Rapido, right, that came into play. So that was like, AI was recommending that this is the trend that the consumer wants to see in the retail industry, they want to, by those trends and patterns, and designer was able to take that recommendation, and that's how they were churning out quickly. Then came the next step that they saw the huge, they saw a huge demand when they uh, they went ahead with those patterns and uh, went to the market with those patterns, and then now uh, over the year they have improvised that whole uh, Moda Rapido brand into so much so that the AI is the designer behind those patterns. So the, the, the patterns, the color, the whole design process, they started with the t-shirt brand and now they have expanded into all product categories. So that's the power of AI. So it is, a, you can consider that this is a designer-less brand now. Instead of asking a designer, the fashion is driven via the en engineers, right? So that is the story of Mintra. So what I am coming to a point is that how technology is taking over, you know, 
not not only taking over how is it assisting in every for forms of the industry like it be it the be it your um, you know uh, the uh, regular uh, manufacturing industry be it is be it your uh, you know um, your personal um, uh, personal improvement uh, sections everywhere the technology can be assisted right so that's the story behind this mintra now coming to the topic of marketing right probably this word is also new to to many people like what is marketing right marketing is simply marketing technology to the, the abbreviation of marketing is marketing technology nothing fancy about it right so what what comes to your mind when you see or hear about marketing right can you can you guess few few words when it comes to marketing campaigns ads offers right or contents now the social media contents and everything now that's all is part of this marketing right even the booth outside right the what you are seeing each company's booth that is also a marketing initiative why why company is spending so much on marketing right and specifically on the marketing technology right so let me give you some statistics around this marketing technology now look at this number 5233% growth from 2011 to 2020 and see the numbers it's like there were 150 tools and technologies available in the marketing uh, technology space and now it has grown to 8000 and probably if i speak of today it is 10000 plus technologies and tools so this space is so cluttered like so many of players are there here but then why they are like playing in this field because it if it is so cluttered why people are still playing in this field right because you see i mean few of the gartners comments that overall marketing budget is 10% of the uh, the organization's revenue that means they are more investing on to, onto this technology to attract the consumers to attract the customers loyalty right so 68 percent of the cmos they feel that they should increase their budget in the marketing technologies so my point here is that if the whole industry's leaders are in, invested on onto this technology then there must be they must be also wanting that kind of return on their investment right so there comes this technology this marketing technology is going to help the marketers to understand that whatever spend they are doing on the marketing how can they get the return of it are they is there any effective way that they can understand that they are spending on the right customers on the right segments of the customers and is it ultimately increasing their growth of the organization right that is that is what they they want to understand and they want to invest in this marketing technology right and where comes the data here till now we understood that marketing is a big industry and everyone is focused on investing onto that industry now where comes the data if you see the data and analytics is in the top 3 li line items in top 3 capability gap that the marketers are seeing right so there are traditionally there are a lot of ways the marketers are approaching towards the co consumers and they are getting the return out, out of it but now but many of them were based on the gut feeling right okay if i go for this strategy probably this will work for my customers right but what they want as a more targeted way is that they want to utilize the data you know to support that gut feeling into a concrete decision making right that's why the data plays the important role in this whole marketing technology of tools and softwares right that we are using some some more uh, you know data points to add that you know 63% there will be overall increase in the marketing spends in the in the in the next upcoming years for every organization right so till now we understood that this technology is booming and there is a lot of opportunity where data plays an important role in this industry and everyone wants to 
have their share of um, you know their, their piece of um, uh, data and analytics and insights from this whole marketing tools and technologies right so some more data points like what you, what you see here is that like data is the pivotal in and they are spending quite some amount like 68 percent of their spend is going towards the data in in the whole marketing technology area all right now we understood about the technology and we understood also like how data is playing an important role let's take you through a story you uh, you can see this picture right so can you can you tell me like uh, one or two observations what you see what you can infer from this uh, 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 mom what, what do you observe from this picture any any hands there sorry multitasking correct yeah what else different demands right okay anything in this side quite silent zone probably they un understand everything yeah please you can tell a very simple picture what do you infer from here what's the what's the very yeah go ahead structured data okay the engineer comes here okay i am i'm just telling from the consumer perspective very very common man's perspective what do you observe she is a mom yes <laughs> okay finally we came down to the level okay she's a mom <laughs> right right yeah what else do you see here she could be a single mother yes exactly busy in work yeah so yeah thank you so that that's how so these are i mean few of the behaviors we can see i mean we can understand from this person's uh, one of the snapshot of this person right think about what we used to get previously like maybe six seven years back from this picture what we are getting now if we are getting this picture when i say we means the technology and what we can get that's the what we can predict from this picture right let's take a journey about that what we can see from the the hindsight from this picture what's the hindsight about it she's a female that's the first thing we can know right she the customer probably spends thousand dollars till date because from from her transaction history we can verify that right thousand uh, dollars per per year or something she's spending on this retailer what are some of the inferred behaviors do do we understand from the from the from the previous history of the data can we understand any inferred behaviors no probably we, we just have the point of sales data and from there we can just see right what is the observed behavior like from other patterns do we see any observed behavior okay yeah she purchases these kind of items regularly what is the what is the frequency uh, by which she is purchasing what is the last transaction what was the recency on on that store she has purchased probably that's the max we could get as a hindsight of the data right like hindsight means something which is already present from where what do you infer right What's the insight about the data? The same lady, what are you getting more? What's the customer profile now? From a female, now we are seeing, okay, probably middle-aged mom. Yeah, some of you told she's a mom. Mom of two preschoolers. Some more information from just being a mom, mom of two preschoolers, right? Living in urban location, probably she's going to a supermarket. From there, we can understand she's living in an urban location. What's the customer value, right? She will spend $1,412 with this retailer. That is something we are getting, the customer value, right? Some of the inferred behaviors we are getting as inside. Okay, she is probably price sensitive. She will 
she will if it is a high ticket item like something on the on the higher budget side she will probably see and compare one brand versus other and then she will pick that up right that's the inferred behavior we are seeing as an insight what is the observed customer behavior like customer she spends average 40 dollars across the last four weeks she has spent like that and across brands and category like that's also something you can see as an observed behavior that's insight what's going to be the foresight that means what is going to be the prediction around that customer she's middle-aged mom of two teens or preschoolers whatever she's time sensitive we are seeing one more behavior of that customer difm like do it for me she is more inclined towards okay there is some chopped vegetable packed she will pick that up versus the the whole vegetables right there is something uh, as a as a bundle buy one get one offer she may pick that up right she is impulsive okay something something on like 20% off even if you spend like uh, like 1000 rupees or something you get like 20% off on the other probably she will pick that up so she is very impulsive as a buyer, right? If, if some promos are happening, she may go and pick that up. And specifically, as an insight, we saw that she is she's an urban, she's, she stays in an urban location. Here we are specifically saying that she stays in the downtown Atlanta, right? So that's the difference from an insight to a foresight. What's the predictions, predictive actions that we are seeing? The customer is 40% likely to churn, driven by the high out-of-shelf availability in her preferred category. So that is something the prediction it is doing. That's the foresight we are getting. There is a, there is a possibility of churn, and that possibility is 40%. And why that churn is happening, that also we can verify because of this out-of-shelf uh, uh, issues that is happening with the retailer, right? She has preference about some 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 of the brands uh, versus the private levels right that's the ins uh, foresight we are getting what is the customer lifetime value again like in like very specifically we can say that she will be spending like what she has spent compared to that we are saying she will be spending like the 2.4 x amount of value on the diverse assortments that we are getting right Going down the lane, what, what would be the inferred behaviors? She's, she's a risk aversion cu customer. She doesn't want to try new things or new brands online. She generally wants to go to the shop and see and then purchase. What are the, some of the observed behaviors? Again, she, she saw some upcoming offers by email and she has enabled that push notification on her app. That means she's an omni-channel customer. She, she does shopping in the store as well as she's shopping online right so she 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 crosses that boundary of like being both offline as well as the online store what's the customer satisf satisfaction so we understood that okay she is a high value customer because because of her lifetime value we are seeing she is a high value customer and she ha she has we have received lot of these call center information from her and she's re she may be complaining about this out, out of shelf availability of things and that should be something we should be taking care of right so now that's the power of data like from the foresight to the insight uh, sorry from the hindsight to the insight and now we are t telling about the foresight right that's the prediction power of the data the same data was there earlier we added few more attributes of the data, few more layering of the data, few more sources of data, and now we can see what's the power of this foresight, right? How do we leverage, I mean, what, so we, we heard about this story, like hindsight, insight, and foresight, right? What has happened behind the scenes, right? Behind the scenes, is, it is this story, right? Agree? So we go for the data collection, we go for the data preparation, the data collection here was in the uh, hindsight, it was only related to your first party data. Now for the foresight, we are going for first party data, third party data, your uh, share of wallet information, your credit card payment information, everything now is go going into this data collection part, right? 
you have this data preparation. You got your first party data where you, you as a consumer, all the information about you in that retailer is present in your first party data. Now you are preparing that when you got this third party data, how this household is connected to the other family members, the same consumer is connected to the other family members, right? That household information also you are getting from that third party data, right? So that's how it's not only about your purchase behavior, but as a family, how you are behaving, right? Probably because you have a preschooler, you are more inclined towards those offers and everything in the in the children's assortment category, right? Or in the in these um, when when the school reopens, probably this this family is more interested towards those campaigns and offers related to the you know um, uh, back to school category things, right? So that's where we are doing the data preparation. Multiple data sources making sense together in the data preparation size. Now we are doing data visualization. Why we are doing data visualization? Again, we understood that the first party data and third party data are now prepared. Whether do they make, make sense? Is there any trends and patterns that are available? That's about the data visualization part we are doing. Finally, the data analysis. The data analysis will finally show that whether this first party data and third party data or even this, um, even other different categories of data, are they having any correlation among themselves, right? Is there any feature that can be derived by, you know, um, having that correlation, understanding that correlation among themselves? That's about the data analysis. And putting it all together, finally we come up with that data story. That, that mom with a preschooler, she's impulsive buyer, that's the story we, we came through. So this was the whole process that, had, that, a, that an organization has go through to come to that point of that storytelling. Now we understood like why, how the consumer behavior is happening. I'll just take you one level down now to, to make you understand any mar marketing technology that is happening, right? Or any marketing technology. What's the standard reference architecture that generally any organization plays? Now here, each box can be replaced by a, by a standard offering of, of any, um, any tool that is available on the market, or it can be a internal internally developed solution or service by the organization, right? So it's the same source data as we are getting. We are getting the clickstream data. That means uh, from the digital platform, we are getting the clickstream data. We are getting the point of sales data from the stores. We are getting the third party credit information, loyalty data, voice of customer data, call center data. All of these are our source data. It is not limited to our internal data. It is not limited to one line of business units data from every other source for the same customer, we are getting a 360 view of, of, that, of that customer from by getting all the source data. Once you get that store data, source data, the, you, you do this analytics, this whole analytics 360. Previous to this session, they were talking about this customer data platform, where like you, you understand about the customer 360, the same thing. So you understand the genome of the, of the customer, right? The story that we were speaking about, like how, what is the purchase behavior of that customer? What is the um, digital behavior of that customer? How often she, go, she takes the items to the cart or, and how often from the cart she really converts that into a sales, right? Uh, into a um, real sale for the organization. So th those kind of information, those kind of genomes of the customer is is getting organized here by understanding all these third party data so that's where you see this the the behavioral matrices the transactional information the digital data the marketing data the voice of customer data all these data put together are, and you are understanding a 360 view of a customer that's the customer genome now with that as i mentioned about the uh, the the few uh, the foresight about the thing you understand the customer profile you are con understanding the lifetime events of this what do you do after that you you got the CDP customer data platform what do you do 
you do thus customer segmentation, customer profiling, and all of these by using using all the all of these attributes, right? So once you got that specific customer segment to which your marketing has to be targeted, then you can use any of these marketing experimentation tools to really see that whether these campaigns that I am going to launch for this specific customer segment with these attributes, whether it's going to be successful or not. That is about this TALP here I mentioned, means any experimentation platform. Like you take a group of customers with certain attributes and you expose your campaign to that attribute versus another customers with the same similar behavior and pattern, but you do not expose your campaign to that, uh, to that group or cohort. And you see, whether your campaign, how is it behaving this group versus that group. And there you see, whether you see your uh, sales lift is happening, your overall average order value is increasing, all of these, the, the, the parameters, the KPIs, whether they're increasing, and that's, that's called a test, test versus contro control experimentation, right? So you, you did the segmentation of the customers, and for those particular segments, you did the experimentation, and you understood that whether your campaign is going to be successful or not. Now you understood that the campaign is going to be successful, you do that through any activation platform, right? And, that, and that's where comes the activation platform, and your campaign reaches out to you. Now you may get it through your email, you may get it in your stores, in your store location, you may get it as a in-app notification. That's where the activation has come in, right? So that's how the whole story comes. Like you got the source party data, uh, source data, you understood the, the customer's nuances, the customer's behaviors, and then accordingly you have designed your campaign, you experimented the campaign, and according to the results of the campaign, you are now launching that. So that's how the, the strength of this marketing technology really plays well together, right? Now this is one of the architectures that we had followed in Treedance while developing one of these um, uh, test and learn platform and the customer genome as a CDP platform, where we have implemented this in one of the uh, North America's retailer, and uh, there we have used this. GCP as the platform. The similar data story, as I mentioned, you get the data source, you get your models created, the core models created from th those data sources, you do your data engineering pipeline process it, and finally make those predictions, right? Some of the insights and foresights that we saw, right? You got this ML models created, which, which runs on this data proc cluster or vertex.ai, but then to back that up, you should have your core data model ready. Once you got your ML mo models ready, you create those features by, by utilizing the feature stores, be it the Databricks feature store, anything where you create those reusable features and multiple ML models will be reusing that feature store, right? And then finally you got your customer's insights, right? And to make all of these orchestrated and automated, we are using this Cloud Composer, where it will be orchestrated and the uh, Apache Airflow is used as a scheduler to do this on time, on, on, on batch mode, right? Some of the data, uh, one more data point when we implemented this using GCP, just to emphasize on the uh, strength of cloud when you are utilizing this data is that 700 GB of records got processed in one minute and 20 seconds and the insight that we got is just 112 records, right? So that is the churning capability of GCP that it is providing. So now we understand that, okay, we had a story to do, we have the data to do, uh, to support that story, but we also need the infra to, to do that, right? And that's where comes the power of GCP or AWS infrastructure. So what my point here is that, for, for, for every strategy or every data strategy or every marketing strategy, we, we also need that whole data engineering process to support that strategy and then only that strategy will be successful, right? 10% of US so shoppers. I, I'll just skip this because we are, we are um, more on the time. 
So that, that's the sum of the story. So how, how did we do that? S steps are simple, the story is big, but steps are simple. Just break it down into these steps and you are ready with your data engineering process. You identify the KPI, you discover the KPI, you understood whatever is the data model that you have to support, right? You define the KPI, right? What is my average order value is going to be? What is my, or what is the customer's um, purchase behavior definition is going to be, right? You create that whole pipeline according to that definition. You do design and transformation of the data. As I mentioned, 500 GB of records ultimately went and gave the insights about 112 records, right? So that's where all these D pipelines will come in picture. And to surround that, definitely you need the data quality, right? Garbage in, garbage out. If you don't have the data quality, your insights will be that uh, bad as well. And finally, you have your alerts and monitoring, which, which generally shows that, I mean, in your process, if you want to really do any outlier removal or any alerts on some thresholds, there also comes your alerts and monitoring mechanism. And finally, you have integrated it with an orchestration tool. So that's the overall accelerated data engineering development that happens for any, any of these technology solutions to really come into, the, come into play, right? So ultimately, it sums up to the same point. Efficient data engineering means improved business outcomes. That's about it. Thank you.